You need to get ready, Lord, to Morning, church. Morning. Are we ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. I can hear the choir, but I can't hear nobody else. Are y'all ready? Yes. That's better. I just want to pray that all is well as we gather today to hear the response to God's words. And my theme today is right now. Can you, have, can you say that back to me now? My theme today is right now. right now. And so when I say right now, y'all say? Right now. Say it loud enough now. Right now. Good. The gospel speaks to us today. In those days after the tribulation, the sun will darken, the moon will not give light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heaven will be shaken. And then we will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, with great power and glory. On this weekend, as we draw near to the end of the church year, we begin to hear parts of the scriptures that tells us of the end times. And believe me, I'm not a fan of the end times. And when I start hearing and reading this scripture, two songs like they usually do came to my mind and I was working on two songs. And the first one was by the Temptations called A Ball of Confusion. Yeah. And then part of that song said, the only person that's talking about love is the preacher. And the only one talking about education is the teacher. And Anthony Hamilton told us, all people bending down, all they're doing is tying their shoes. They're not praying, church. And then with that second song was the song by Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Wake up, everybody. Wake up. Many years ago when I went to Africa, that was the number one song. Everybody in the country was saying, wake up, time to start a new day. Maybe they may listen to what you have to say. And they said, preachers, start preaching what you teach. And they were talking to me today. So I have to teach, preach, but I have to teach that too. It may be helpful for us to know that the people of Jesus' time heard these words from Mark Gospel and from the prophet Daniel quite differently than we do. And to them, the message of God's powerful love for his people came across quite clearly. As strange as these images of the end of the world may be for us, the people of Jesus' time and this apocalyptic writings, they were used to hearing from the Bible, along with their history and the prophets, Psalms, and Proverbs. The idea of the world coming to an end has something to be expected with trepidation, no doubt. But far more important to them, far more encouraging for us, is to hear that when the end comes, God will protect his people and gather them together from the far corners of the earth. The lines are clearly drawn. Forces of good and evil are at play. Not that we usually are in the shades of gray, but in black and white. As so it was for those who heard Jesus. This is the good news. Words not so much to choose sides as to remain steadfast, trusting in the promise that despite all confusion and anxiety, that time seemed to be overwhelming, the mercy of God will overcome the darkness, with it, which in different ways touches each of our lives. And this is some good news too, because the battle between good and evil has already been won, church. We're just waiting for our change to come. Trust in that promise and to live our lives as though we really believe it. And if we were writing the gospel today, we might reach for a different set of images, but the call to deep faith as Jesus calls us today requires reading, requires vivid pictures, bold characters, great drama. It is no coincidence that the book of Daniel and the gospel of Mark were both written during the times when the communities of believers experienced persecution. When to be a Jew or a Christian, putting your faith in God when confessing the same publicly might put them to death. And this is still happening throughout the world today, church. Yes. When we hear today's gospel, 
we can see past or more deeply into the words of God, the gospel, and find the message of hope that Jesus speaks. Even in our dark prophecy, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. He says to us today, just as he said to his disciples, if not the planet Earth, our worlds, the worlds we build for ourselves to live our lives with some degree of routine, normalcy at the times are shaken, such as a time when a loved one dies, and we had many loved ones die this year, a time when we are unemployed and no employment seems to be in sight, a time when the doctor says to us, there's nothing more I can do. A time when a cancer diagnosis, when we went in for a routine check. A time when our city is destroyed right in front of us. How else does one describe it? Our individual worlds, which we put so much effort in maintaining our peace of mind, are never quite as stable as we would like to think. As the Bible tells us, do not worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow may never come, might not come. It is not promised to us. Instead, he told us to be anxious about today because there's enough to take care of today. And I'm only going to give you enough strength today to make it through the day. And when you wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to give you that strength. So don't try to put any in reserve. Use it up. There's much to be anxious about, and the Bible tells us we do not know the day, the hour, when our individual and end time come. So we must be prepared when we are called. The good news for us is that we were promised that Jesus had prepared a place for us, and he will come to take those who believe to that place. If we focus on today only, we will be able to be kingdom people, doing the things that Jesus asked us to do. But if we concentrate on the end times, we will worry over things that we cannot control. Today, Jesus is trying to motivate in us from sitting around and trying to interpret the signs in order to determine whether or not the end is near. Jesus assures us that we will not be able to miss it. We don't need to focus on the tiny details to see if this is the end. This all means that we should focus on moving from speculations to believing that the battle is already won and we are to be busy with the work of the kingdom people. And you know the battle is already won. Look at that cross. Look at it. That's where the battle is won. But he tells us, instead of thinking about the end times, maybe we should think about what we're doing in our lives right now. Didn't hear you. Because there's so many things that we're not doing that we should be doing. And there's so many things that we're doing we shouldn't be doing. So we need to look at our lives. Maybe we should think about what's going on in the world right now like what happened in Paris, like what's happened in the streets of Baltimore. We have a lot of work to do, but we have to care about all God's people because if somebody's in prison, we're in prison. We're never free until we're all free. Maybe we should think about the fact that God has given us time to live out the gospel instead of preparing for the destruction of the world right, right now. Maybe it mandates for us to go out to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick and in prison now while we can. Just sitting around worrying about the signs of the end of the world does nothing. Ministering to others in Jesus' name does everything, church. Maybe, yes, maybe this weekend, there is a sign of God's love for us where we witnessed the baptism of six new members of the family of God. The baptisms are a reminder of our baptismal promise that all of us are responsible for their growth in the church. It takes a whole church to raise a Christian. 
we have, that means that we must be busy building the church of God so that we don't have time to worry about tomorrow. But our work has just begun. Right now we have four adults who want to be Catholic. We ought to walk with them, encourage them, and love them as Jesus loves us. And this is good news for all of us. With all that is happening in the urban churches these days, rumors of closing and clustering, we can see the people in this church and other churches have their doors wide open and people who are seeking God are coming to the love of the church. I urge you today to welcome our new members and their families, not only with your applause, but going up to them and introducing yourselves. But again, our work is not done because there are many who do not know God. But it is our responsibility to introduce others to God's love and they may have a future with and in God. As strange as it may seem, we may have to start at home first. Once we see the power and the glory of God, we can run and not get tired of loving God and doing his will. We have so much work to do in our community and they will know that we are lovers of God by the way we walk and the way we talk and also the way we love. Later in this gospel of Mark, Jesus at the end of the discourse reminds everyone that they must keep awake. We all awake, stay awake to see the signs of God activity in the world and to be part of that activity right now. Jesus wants us to be awake to God, to notice God, to notice the opportunities God is providing for us to minister to those around our newly baptized and their families and the new members who want to be Catholic. We ought to keep awake to those opportunities so that we can seize them and can respond to them because there's so many real people now need to feel God's healing touch and many of them, there isn't much time. Just like they said in that song, take care of all the old people because they don't have too very long before their judgment day. Won't you make them happy before they pass away? Amen. Their lives are shortened and diminished by poverty, loneliness, mental illness, hunger, and incarceration. However, Jesus continues to give all of us one more chance. Each time he wakes us up, he gives us one more chance to get it right, church. And he never gives up on us. And hearing Jesus' word today, that all is right for holding up us up is the one who will gather us for the, from the four winds from the earth of the sky. When our individual worlds do fall apart, and sooner or later, we will have a God who will help us back to our feet and invite us into a new world where our peace is guaranteed, not by our own efforts, but by the Prince of Peace. Let us, our fears be belayed and feel assured that we have today one more chance, and that is surely good news right now. Then we say, as a church, we ain't no way tired. We come so far from where we started from. Nobody, nobody, nobody told us that the road would be easy. And I don't believe, no, no, I don't believe he brought us this far to leave us.